Hello again. Uh, welcome to part three of my build. Um, this video, we're going to look at uh, beginning the weathering process. And uh, I'll begin by some sponging. Uh, so getting some deep wear in there. And I'm using Model Air Hull Red by Vallejo. Uh, it's a deep reddish brown. Uh, it's a great color for simulating old rusty iron. Now, of course, there'd be probably some debate as to whether this thing was made out of iron, but uh, we'll go with it for uh, the sake of the of the weathering process. So I'm sponging um, uh, some paint on right now. Of course, you want to get rid of most of the the paint, the excess uh, on uh, I put on the dish, but also if you can't see off camera, it's uh, a piece of paper. A piece of paper absorbs the excess beautifully. Now you want to apply it into areas on the vehicle that are going to see quite a bit of uh, wear and use. So this front here, whole this thing lifts up. And uh, so there's a step there and this pilot would step uh, on that and get into the vehicle. Now you can't, obviously it's closed right now, but I wanted to concentrate the wear on uh, these areas. So uh, consider uh, boots and um, hands and arms and, and you know getting in and out of this vehicle constantly over time would would uh, reduce the the paint uh, to uh, uh, either bare metal or what have you. Now we're going to some extreme weathering here. Uh, you know, normally probably in the field, like in modern armies, you know, they would touch up with with you know spray paint and 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 cover these places up. You you want to have as much uh, maintenance of your vehicle, which is basically will save your life. Uh, as you can. But uh, for the sake of uh, science fiction and uh, this fiction subject, we're going to go with some heavy, heavy wear. So I just uh, build up some light coats. So you want to just go lightly and gradually build up those tones. You don't want to just slop this stuff on. Just, you know, test in certain areas. Consider where its, it's uh, environment is, where it's going to go, contact is it going to have with uh, with the environment that it's in is tree branches or bullets or wh whatever if you have any um, difficulty in getting this this technique the sponge into sort of tight areas you can always uh, just break a little bit off and dip it in the paint get rid of the excess and and use tweezers as a means to get it into the places you want it to go So once the uh, sponging paint is dry, I'm going to apply the first layer of washes. I, I'm starting with MIGS Brown Wash for Dark Yellow. I really like this brown color. It's uh, more of a greeny brown. And it's uh, one that I use to get things going on the uh, weathering process. Um, it, um, it does state uh, Brown Wash for Dark Yellow. Now, don't feel that you are confined to use this color only on Dark Yellow vehicles. You can use any color you like any shade of green or brown, depending on, on what you're trying to achieve, don't feel that you have to use what the product uh, states on the bottle. So I thinned it down with some um, odorless uh, mineral spirits. And uh, many people think that, well, you know, you just apply this stuff right out of the bottle and sludge it right on. No, it's better to control the 
consistency by uh, putting it into a separate container, thinning it down, and then gradually applying it. So here you can see I'm uh, using a downward motion because you want to you want to uh, have the wash flow and, and streak in a way uh, with um, uh, how the elements would run down. So if it, if it's raining or whatever, you would you would follow the uh, the course of of water and, and rain. And so that's what I do. And so here I'm just uh, heavily thin, just building up the the layers, just creating different tones and different areas. And we'll build upon that gradually. Okay, so moving on to uh, blue for Panzer Gray. I'm using this uh, obviously as the uh, the robot is blue color, but uh, it does create additional rich and deeper tones within the the base color. And uh, again, just um, heavily thin, putting it on, building up those layers. Uh, just to note that um, off camera, I do do the rest of the vehicle. It's not uh, I'm only not only just doing it on the top here. It's uh, it's everywhere. And um, as you can see, you have quite a bit on there, so it's easy to um, to remove. I just uh, clean off uh, the brush, put in mineral spirits, and empty the uh, the brush of uh, the excess paint, and then just go back over it uh, with a dry brush and it just uh, removes it. Now if you're using a, um, a semi-gloss uh, or a flat you're going to find that the um, the uh, the washes really uh, sort of bite into the paint. If you have uh, like a very heavy gloss finish it might be di more difficult to achieve some of the graduation in tones uh, and gradual color changes uh, in the weathering process. So I always go with either a flat or a semi-gloss. And actually it's not even semi-gloss, I would say it's satin. Uh, so yeah, um, using slimy green light. Now, because this vehicle is a diving beetle, it goes in the water, it's in a sort of a jungle, uh, watery environment. Um, I figured uh, to get that um, sort of a, you know, grimy, slimy kind of uh, greens, uh, onto the vehicle to again give it some more interest and um, give it some more appeal and randomness because you don't want to have everything uniform. If you have uh, the weathering process that, that reveals a very uniform and uh, predictable um, look then um, you're going to detract from um, interesting spots on the vehicle that may, might make the viewer stop and take more time to uh, check out the uniqueness of your model. So make everything random as you can. And as Adam Wilder says, no scratches too large. So I'm going down with the, um, of course, uh, the downward motion as the slime and the water and the, wherever it's coming out of a swamp or pond or whatever uh, washes off the vehicle. It's in a downward following uh, how water would uh, flow off the vehicle. So as you can see, the color is building up and the layers have uh, created a nice um, uh, tonal variation on the, on the base coat. So I'm back over with the um, dark yellow, my uh, go-to um, color for washing. And here I am going over the, uh, the gun. And like I said before, you're not confined to using a specific uh, color that the uh, product uh, mentions on the bottle. I use this uh, as my beginning wash for almost every single color that, uh, that I uh, that I coat a model with. Yeah, I'm just going to give this a good wash, and um, that'll conclude part three. Um, part four is coming up pretty soon. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching. Um, I'm enjoying this build immensely, and uh, see you next time.